हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू द यूट्यूब चैनल ऑफ बींग ए सी सी ए दिस इज दुश्रिता गुप्ता ए सी सी एफ एलिएट एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू बी स्टार्टिंग विद द सेक्शन ए ऑफ द एफ एम कैपलिन किट सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट सिलेबस टॉपिक एरिया विच इज फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट फंक्शन सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन सेज इन रिलेशन टू द फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट ऑफ अ कंपनी विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग प्रोवाइड्स द बेस्ट डेफिनेशन ऑफ अ फर्म्स प्राइमरी फाइनेंशियल ऑब्जेक्टिव सो ऑल ऑफ अस नो दिस इज लिटरली द फर्स्ट थिंग that we know when we start to study fm that the primary objective of uh, financial management is nothing but the maximization of the wealth of the shareholders which is option c over here that to maximize the wealth of its ordinary shareholders moving on indicate by clicking in the relevant boxes whether the following objectives are financial or non financial objectives of a company so let's have a look a uh, maximization of market share so basically uh, market share you would think that th this is a financial objective however this is not because when we are looking at market share it is a relative measure it is in comparison with something something which is the total market and how much is your share in that total market is your market share so basically this will not fall in financial that is why i am putting a tick over here earnings growth definitely financial sales revenue you again a full financial figure then achieving a target level of customer satisfaction so satisfaction does not have any dollar value attached to it so this is non financial then achieving a target level of return on capital employed again this is a financial objective moving on to the third one in uh, which three of the following are the main types of decisions facing the financial manager in a company so we all know we have three decisions basically that are there in financial management one being investment decision another being dividend decision and the third one being the financing decisions so basically if i just give you an overview investment decisions will talk about where you have to put in your money what are the long term assets that the business is going to you know purchase then dividend decisions are something that how much of the profits that have been earned by the company will be distributed to the shareholders and how much will be kept in the company for future projects then financing decisions talks about if you need capital for your business then how much of capital is going to come from what source of finance is basically what your financing decisions talk about moving on which two of the following are examples of financial objectives that a company might choose to pursue so we have to tell two over here and we have to tell two financial objectives right so dealing honestly and fairly this is not a financial one provision of good working conditions again not a financial objective earning above a particular level of return on capital employed uh definitely yes this is a financial objective producing environmentally friendly products again this is a non financial thing so then the last thing that we are left with is option e which talks about gearing level so again gearing is something which is directly financial in nature so that is why option c and e are your answers moving on value for money is an important objective for not for profit organizations which of the following actions is considered uh is consistent with increasing value for money so we have to tell which uh, option is inc uh, increasing the value for money of the customers so basically value for money is nothing but uh, how economic your business is right so um, how you are buying the inputs for the organization so basically that is what it is mainly concerned with so using cheaper source of goods and thereby reducing the quality no this is not value for money searching for ways to diversify the finances of not for profit organization no decreasing waste in the provision of a service by the not for profit organization definitely yes so when you are decreasing the waste you are you know uh putting in over here that inputs are going to be minimized so that will help you with value for money moving on which of the following is least likely to fall within financial management dividend payable is increased this is a part of fm funds are raised again this is a part of fm 
surplus assets are sold off again a part of uh, fm then the last thing is a report is produced comparing actual results to the budget now this is something which is not a part of your fm this is something that the management accountant will do and this will not be something that your financial manager is going to be doing moving on indicate by clicking in the relevant boxes true or false okay financial management is concerned with the long term raising of finance and the allocation and control of resources definitely yes all of these things that are mentioned over here is something that we do in financial management management accounting is concerned with providing information for the more day to day functions of control and decision making definitely true Financial accounting is concerned with providing information about the historical results of past plans and de decisions. Definitely yes, because when we prepare accounts in financial accounting, it is for the historic periods and not the present time. Right. Moving on, which of the following tasks would typically be carried out by a member of the financial management team? So uh, let's see. evaluating proposed expansion plans yes this is definitely something that the uh, fm will do review of overtime spending is not under their purview depreciation on non current assets again not something that they are supposed to look after apportioning overhead costs to cost units again this is something that the management accounting team will be doing so answer is option a moving on which two of the following are examples of internal stakeholders in a firm so we have to tell uh, two over here and uh, those are internal stakeholders right so first of all company directors definitely yes they qualify as internal stakeholders then uh, customers customers are rather connected stakeholders suppliers again are your connected stakeholders then employees also uh, will be a part of your internal stakeholders definitely and then finance providers are again your connected stakeholders so let's move to the next one what is the main purpose of corporate governance so uh, let's read the options to separate ownership and management control of organizations not really to maximize shareholder value that is one of the ultimate you know what we achieve from corporate governance but the main co uh, purpose that we can say is that they want to facilitate the effective management of organizations and to make them more visibly accountable to a wider range of stakeholders so this is more accurate over here this is one of the main purposes of your corporate governance moving on the agency problem is a driving force behind the growing importance attached to sound corporate governance in this context who are the agents so agents are basically you know those people who are responsible for uh, taking care of the company so company is owned by the shareholders they are involved in their day to day works also they cannot be you know taking out time to take decisions for the company so basically they entrust their money in the hands of the you know manager and those who are charged with the governance to look after their company and uh, these are the agents who are appointed by the shareholders to do this task so answer over here will be option c it is the managers who are the agents right moving on to the next one which two of the following statements are correct so we have to pick two over here maximizing market share is an example of financial objective no we just discussed this above shareholder wealth maximization is the primary financial objective for a company listed on a stock exchange definitely this is true financial objectives should be quantitative so that their achievement can be measured again this is true uh why because you know uh, it is very easy it can only be possible to measure that you know something that you have achieved or not if it's in quantitative forms like if you say i want to uh, have a customer rating which is very good so that is something which you have not specified so financial objectives should be such that i am supposed to be let's suppose i project that my profit should increase by 15% in the next year so this is something quantitative and next year if i see how much if i calculate how much my profit is increased maybe my increase is 16% so now i know that my target has been met right so that is why statement 2 and 3 are your answers uh, let's see why statement 4 is wrong 
Three E's are used as a performance measure to assess value for money in not-for-profit organizations. The three E's stand for economy, efficiency and environment. So the third one is wrong. It's economy, efficiency and effectiveness. That's why statement four is not correct. So that means option two and three are your answers. Moving on to the next one. Which two of the following are efficiency targets that a not profit or not for profit organization might put in place? So efficiency basically is about making the most efficient use of your resources. So uh, let's have a look at the statements reduction of wastage of paper. So this is uh, not really so. So, yeah, when we talk about efficiency, we are, you know, talking about utilizing things to the maximum. So when we are reducing the wastage of paper, definitely this will help us to efficiently use this resource. Pay rates for staff of appropriate levels of qualification. Now, this is something which will rather become uh, a point in your economy uh, value for money point then staff utilization again yes since efficiency talks about making the best use of the resources so staff is something that resource which you have and you should utilize it properly so that uh, you have a proper uh, you know efficient use of the resources that you have again satisfaction ratings will be uh, you know falling under the effectiveness part of your value for money objectives moving on Managerial reward schemes should ensure managers take decisions that are consistent with the objectives of shareholders, which three of the following are characteristics of a carefully designed remuneration package. So we have to tell over here uh, which three are uh, good uh, remuneration package features. Linking of rewards to changes in shareholder wealth, definitely yes, because uh, you know that is why if... Uh, the managers are going to be earning more if they maximize the wealth they will definitely work towards it and uh, they will be motivated to do that so this is something which is good matching of managers time horizons to shareholders time horizons definitely yes if uh, you know they are uh, not given short term bonuses they are given long term bonuses because we want to maximize wealth of the shareholders in the long term so definitely this will help then moving on to the next one possibility of manipulation now no this will not be a good thing encouragement for managers to adopt the same attitude risk uh, attitude to risk as the shareholders definitely yes this is something that will be helping uh, the managers to put their focus on what uh, shareholders want and then they will be taking decisions in a similar manner last point is also wrong because it talks about short term goals so we do not want short term you know managers to be influenced by short termism Moving on, we have to uh, select which of the following are typical criticisms of ESOPs. So let's read the statements. When directors exercise their options, they tend to sell their shares almost immediately to cash in on their profits. Definitely, yes, this is a drawback that the ESOPs face. If the share price falls when options have been awarded and the options have no value, they cannot act as an incentive. Definitely true because the main purpose of giving ESOP is to incentivize the manager. It's to, you know, make them feel motivated to work. But if the share price has fallen, they will literally have no motivation right because it does not make sense directors may distort reported profits to protect the share price and the value of share options definitely yes if they see that you know the uh, the reports are not so good they will be motivated to uh, manipulate the figures such that the share price does not fall and their options still have a good value Moving on, the directors of Portico Company have recently engaged a firm of consultants to negotiate standard terms of trade for one of its strategic business units. This includes the agreement by Portico Company to pay a 5% penalty on any late invoice settlement. So this policy is an illustration of the company's concern for which major stakeholder so this clearly talks about uh, you know uh, these are about suppliers because it is the suppliers who are paying the invoices so um, you know they uh, this includes the agreement to pay 5% penalty on any late invoice settlement so if we are uh, you know uh, if we are uh, receiving the uh, payments late then we have to pay a penalty so uh, this is a uh, a policy which concerns our suppliers. 
Under the terms of the UK Corporate Governance Code, what are the only type of directors permitted to sit on a company's audit committee? So, uh, under this Corporate Governance Code, only your independent NEDs are allowed to sit on the audit committee. This is a theoretical aspect which is covered under the beginning portion of your syllabus. So, please be sure that you read through it thoroughly because again, you can expect such questions in your section A of the exam. Which of the following would you expect to be the responsibility of financial management? Producing accounts, no. Uh, producing monthly management accounts, again, no. Advising on investment in non-current assets, again, definitely, yes. This is something that we will be, uh, that will be actually the responsibility of the financial manager. Deciding periods for staff is, again, something that the HR would do. Indicate by clicking the relevant boxes, true or false, okay. Uh, value for money is economy, efficiency and engagement. This is false. The third uh, E is actually effectiveness. Then uh, cumulative dividend means the buyer of the share is entitled to receive the dividend shortly to be paid. Definitely, yes. This means that when you are buying the shares, when dividend is about to be paid, then that means that the buyer will actually be receiving the dividend also when he is buying that share. So, moving on, the dividend payout ratio compares the dividend per share with the market price per share. No, uh, it actually compares the dividend per share to the uh, total earnings. So, for example, if a firm has paid out a dividend of, let's suppose, uh, 5 uh, cents and the total earning that they have done is maybe 10 cents, so then uh, their uh, payout ratio is 50%. That means that for every one, uh, for every two cents that they have earned, they have paid out one cent. So, this is false. Agency problem means that shareholder wealth is not being maximized. Again, this is true. Moving on, increasing which two of the following would be associated with the financial objective of shareholder wealth maximization? So, uh, basically, when you're talking about maximization, you will definitely have a good share price. Again, shareholders will also be looking at a dividend payment. So, these are the two main features that, you know, uh, uh, that will be linked when we are looking at the financial objective of the maximization of the wealth of the shareholders. Then the last question for this topic is, ARP is a charity providing transport for people visiting hospitals. Which of the following performance measures would best fit with efficiency in a value for money review? So basically, uh, when we talk about efficiency, we mean to talk about, uh, you know, utilizing to the best uh, capacity so um, let's have a look at the uh, statements that they say percentage of members who reuse the service this will rather fit in your effectiveness perspective cost per journey to the hospital yes definitely this will be fitting to efficiency comparison to actual operating expenses again the uh, against the budget will relatively talk about economy because it is economy which talks about money and budgets then the number of communities served uh, again this will fall under your effectiveness aspect so that is why option b is your answer with this we have come to an end to the first subtopic of the syllabus of fm exam uh, uh, please stay tuned for the next ones. We will be solving topic wise. The next video will talk about financial management environment. Thank you so much for watching.